See, no one told me life was gonna be this way Your job's a joke, you're broke, your love life's DOA It's like you're always stuck in second gear And when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year But I'll be there for you I'll be there for you Cause you're there for me too <sighs> How long do you intend to keep hiding, kitten? You know spying isn't a good hobby, right? <laughs> Come on out. I won't bite. So, would you mind telling me why you've been following me? You know, my passive perception skill is legendary on the charts, right? And my sleight of hand would put the greatest thief out there to shame. So if you want to try to spy on a rogue like me, just know you will always fail. Unless, of course, you want to try your luck and do a skill check and roll a natural 20 in invisibility. <laughs> uh, oh, you don't play D&D. Well, to put it in English for you, I've noticed you from the start. I've just been waiting for you to approach me yourself and talk to me on your own. I may seem unapproachable, but you never know unless you try. I can tell something is bothering you, kitten. What's the matter? What did I just tell you about my perception? I'm a lot more observant than you think. Come on. Tell me. Out with it. One thing you must know about me is that I enjoy listening to others, and whatever is said to me stays between me and that person. And you can tell me anything. I don't judge. Of course not. I have no right to judge anybody by any factor except their character. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. It's that simple. It doesn't matter to me your race, ethnicity, past, background, Religion, beliefs, political standing, social class, interests, none of it. All that matters to me is how you treat me and the other people around you. Living by this policy is how I've been able to make so many friends around the world. And it's even how I met my current circle of friends, the Butterfly Crew. You don't know the Butterfly Crew? <laughs> well, would you like to hear about them? Hmm, well, let's see. Including me, there's... Twelve of us. The one who brought us together was Mistress. She's the rule enforcer and overall leader of the group. There's PB and Jacques. They're the comedic troublemakers. And you've got Mommy and Daddy, who are the caregivers of the group, as well as the peacemakers. Then you have Darling Lord and Hermano, the big brothers of the group who are the emotional support, as well as the group counselors. There's Aloysius, the talented musician and master sound engineer. And there's also Fluttershy and Blossom, our adorable sisters who are the shining light in the dark hallway. And then you have me, Maso, the lovable, playful pet of the group. Our crew is more of a family to us, hence the sibling and parental titles. But... We're not all the same. I, Mistress, and Mommy are into BDSM. Jacques is a major history buff. Fluttershy is a singing voice better than any Disney princess. And Armano, Darling, and PB can speak in different languages other than English. And not all of us come from the same place, either. I, Mommy, Jacques, Daddy, Aloysius, and Fluttershy are American. Armano and Lord are Latino. Darling is Dutch. Mistress and PB are from the UK, 
and Blossom is from Australia. <laughs> Talking about them like this makes it seem like it was so long ago. We've been together for so long now, yet it only feels like we just met a week ago. <clears throat> were we fast friends? I'd say we were. I was the last to join the crew, but I could tell that I had joined a tightly knit family of friends. If I can speak personally for a minute, I've probably felt safer with them than I have ever felt with anybody in a long time. In my life, I haven't felt very safe around other people. Being a Nekomata, it makes it hard to find even a single person that won't use me or pretend to be a friend just to turn around and hurt me. Being an alley cat, I've survived on my own longer than I can remember. Then Mistress found me and introduced me to the crew. <laughs> to be honest, I owe a lot to Mistress. Not only for taking me in and being the greatest friend I've ever had, but also for giving me the self-confidence to be myself, and being the support I needed. And she's given me a family. I've done my best to try and repay her for all she's done, and I'll probably always be in her debt. But I don't mind. She might not know it, but she gave me much more than an amazing group of friends. She gave me brothers, sisters, kindred spirits, and an amazing support system that I know I can depend on no matter what. It was strange, to say the least, when I first came into the crew. It took me a while to learn everybody and get to know them. Having the rough life I had as an alley cat, it made it hard to trust them immediately. But, little by little, I began to lower my defenses and show my true colors, and let them in on some of my best and worst. There are some things I still haven't told them, and I'm sure with time I'll eventually reveal more and more to them. To some of them, I've already revealed more than I probably should have, of which I'm not very proud of. The last thing I want is to reveal too much and change their opinion of me after gaining their trust. I've... <sighs> I've gained a beautiful family with the butterflies, and it scares me that I might lose them at any moment. You have to understand. I've been betrayed and hurt several times in the past. And good times and positive relationships are so fleeting for me, I can barely remember the last time I was this happy. And every morning, I wake up terrified I might lose them. <laughs> you sound like darling. <laughs> if you were here right now, he'd probably tell me I was being deaf too. You know, so would Mistress Sotomano and Jacuse, to be honest. Although Jacuse would probably punctuate that with a smack upside the head. <laughs> and, uh, Mistress would grab my collar and haul my ass to our private room. <clears> hmm? <throat> oh, you mean this? Oh, yeah, it's a real collar. It's a symbol showing I moaned. Do you remember when I said we had all different interests? Well, some of us have similar interests as well. In the world of BDSM, this collar means I've been claimed by a dominant and have an owner. That owner... Well... I don't see him much anymore, but... Mistress took me in as hers. <laughs> she does have a name, but... We all just call her Mistress. Because she's, well, my mistress. The first time I called her that, everyone enjoyed it so much it stuck. <sighs> you don't know how much it would kill me to lose my family. 
Each and every one of them and the crew has helped me in so many ways. I could go on and on. But there are special moments with each of them that I will be forever grateful for, and... Each time it made me trust them completely. Each time it showed me they truly care for me. Uh, well, uh... One I can recall vividly, very vividly, happened between me and Darling. It was storming really hard one night, and the lightning and thunder was just menacing and wouldn't let up. I've always been afraid of lightning and thunder, so much so that I get panic attacks. Because I was going through so much anxiety that night, sleep was impossible, and I had been awake for over 24 hours by this time. By morning, the storm was still going strong, and I was going crazy trying to drown out the storm. I'd drawn all the curtains, I was blaring music, I was singing, I was rushing around trying to get my laundry done in under a minute. I felt like I couldn't breathe. My heart was racing, and I almost got my stutter back. Darling came home that day and saw what was going on. Immediately, his big brother instincts kicked in. He grabbed me and made me stand as still as he could and made me look into his eyes. He told me to tell him what was wrong, but ever the stubborn fool I am, I refused and told him I was fine. Knowing I was full of shit, he picked me up and took me to my room and tucked me into bed. Even after my fighting back and refusing, he was able to calm me down just by his voice. To this day, I still don't know how he does it. But within a few minutes, his voice was able to calm me down enough and pull me out of my own head. It only lasted a couple minutes, but I swear, it felt like he must have been at it for a couple hours. I ended up falling asleep listening to him, and I slept through the whole day. I didn't wake up once. I woke up safe in my bed that night, surrounded by the whole crew knowing I was cared for and loved. <laughs> well, you can probably see I'm not the most dominant person in the group. <laughs> if I'm... well, if I'm being honest. <laughs> if I'm around someone I don't trust, that's a different story. You put me in a room of people I don't trust, I'll make it known that I'm not one to be messed with. I'm sure you've seen this. However, on the flip side, if I'm around ones I do trust, I let that dominant side of me go dormant, and I'll be an adorable little kitty again. <laughs> Of course I didn't trust them right away. Trusting them took time. Well, yes, obviously I did eventually learn to trust all of them. But trust isn't something that's just given away so carelessly. Even though I was supposedly among friends, I still kept my defenses up just in case they would try to hurt me. But... There was, uh, there was one that understood my position all too well. The one who shared my insecurities and the one who saw right through my defenses and facade almost immediately. It was Armana. He knew just what to say and when. And he was always there for me no matter what the problem was or what time of day it was. Even when I had just a hint, the tiniest little tic-tac hint of depression in my voice, he would always pull me aside just to make sure I was okay. 
Even to this day, he still keeps close tabs on me. Come to think of it, so do Daddy and Mistress. I'm sure he, Daddy, and Mistress already gathered the others and started a search party for me at this point. Uh, I kinda got into one of my depression moods and decided to go for a walk. I did leave a note saying I'd be back later, but knowing them, they're going to read the note and still come looking for me anyway. Why? Well, I'd like to think it's because they care so much about me that if I disappear, they would come looking for me. <laughs> Almost like a game of cat and mouse. Except this time, I'm the mouse. And they're the cat. <laughs> you know, in my entire life, I never thought I'd ever have a group of friends so accepting and understanding. I won't bore you with everything I have to deal with due to my fragile health, but I will tell you it's because of my fragile health that I've been unable to maintain quality friendships. When you deal with what I have to deal with, not many people are willing to tolerate the amount of baggage that I tend to bring to a relationship, be it a friendly one or a, a romantic one. Inevitably, my condition makes them leave or turn me away because they're unable to handle me anymore. Like... <clears throat> well, like my depression, for example. Taking off like I did. Taking off like I did has made a lot of people lose faith in me. So much so that I've been told to never come back. In my past, I... I, uh... let my depression get the best of me. And... And I was literally so alone. I felt like I had no other way out. I felt like I couldn't count on anyone. And I knew I couldn't run away from my conditions. So... I chose to run away from people. I blocked myself off from the rest of the world and... I kept to myself while keeping my eyes on other people. I learned over time to study people and their every move, every flaw, every normal behavior. That way it was easier to deflect the attention away from me, so I stayed separated from the rest of the world. Then when Mistress found me and allowed me to join the family, I felt my barriers slowly crumble. It frightened me at first, feeling like I couldn't hold my walls up, no matter how hard I tried. Very soon, though, I began pouring my heart out to them. I showed my frail condition. I... I had fucking full-blown panic attacks in front of them. I... I even cried in front of them, several times. I don't cry in front of anybody, not even my own parents, yet I, I, I did with them. It felt so right to let my walls crumble to dust and let them in, yet it, it frightened me to no end. To this day, I constantly ask myself. How does something that feels so wrong feel so right? How can something that terrifies me to my very core 
also make me feel the happiest and most relaxed I've ever been. And then it hit me. It hit me like a lightning bolt. This is what true friendship is. This is what true friendship feels like. To me, true friendship is the special feeling of blissful dread you have when you think of your relationship with your friends. You're thankful and blessed you have them, yet you wake up scared they won't be there the next day. That fear, it makes you treasure every day and every moment you have with them. With this feeling inside your heart, you will never, ever take their friendship for granted. And that's how I know I found a true band of friends that I know for a fact were meant to enter my life. I know it's a lot to take in, but there's a reason behind all of this. You want to know why I just poured my heart out to you. You want to know why I just revealed myself, my most vulnerable state to you. I'm telling you all of this because you wanted to know more about me. And I'm telling you to not be too choosy with your friends because you never know who just might end up being your best friend. I know you want to be my friend because of what you think I am and who you think I am. But if I'm being honest, you don't truly know me at all. Even now, after all I've said, I can see it in your eyes. You weren't expecting any of that, were you? You weren't expecting me to give out so much information at one point. So many dark tales of my life. I'm telling you all of this because you need to learn to not be so choosy and picky with who you decide to associate yourself with. You never know who just might end up being a friend of yours, and it might surprise you. It might be your neighbor. It might be the next person to compliment your clothes. It might be someone you just bump into on the bus. Or it might be the next person to pick you up when you're down. Yep. That's them. The best people I've ever met. And had the privilege of calling friends. Kitten. The butterfly crew. <laughs> well, it looks like they're waiting for me. Remember what I said, okay? If you can do that for me, then maybe we can be friends too someday. <laughs> See you around, kitten.
Hey there, kitten. Thank you so much for watching my video. I truly hope you enjoyed. This audio is dedicated to my lovely friends whom I call the Butterfly Crew. I don't know where I'd be without you guys. And I hope you know I meant every word of what I said. So to Raven, Mark, Ashton, Dull, Knox, Ryan, Owl, Zona, Playboy, Blossom, and Red, I would like to say thank you so, so much for being my friends and for being the lights at the end of my dark tunnel. I would also like to thank my lovely patrons on Patreon as well. I can't thank you enough for all your love and support. I'd also like to thank my lovely subscribers. Without you, I don't know where this channel would be without your continued support and love too. Please press those like and subscribe buttons if you liked what you heard. And why not give my notification bell a ring as well? That way you can be up to date on all my community post updates and future uploads and premieres. I upload pretty much every day on my community page, and I try to upload at least once a week. I am Massa Kitty, and I will see you all next time. Bye!